expectant this morning. I don't know about you. Whenever an opportunity to hear God's word comes, uh, I'm always excited. Expectation is the mode of manifestation. Like I often say, if you are not expecting anything, then you will not be disappointed. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard from the profile of our guest minister this morning. I will not want to say much in the first service, but I think I will still have to say a couple of things before he comes up to bring God's word to us this morning. We are highly privileged, graced of God, to have in our midst this morning one of God's choice servants. Um, I've known him uh, from afar for several years, uh, but I got to know him much more closely through uh, a senior uh, colleague, uh, a mentor, and a father that is Reverend Victor Adeyemi, to be precise. And ever since our paths crossed, it's like, uh, you know, it's like you're fa fighting your brother, they have been looking for all this while. He's a man of great integrity. Uh, Pastor Dami is a, is a Christian. Let me say that. And I have my reason for saying that because you can't say that about every man of God. Amen. Exactly. But I have to say that today. Uh, I love him from the bottom of my heart. Um, there's so many things about him. It's been a great blessing to me and my wife. And uh, I know a day is going to come. We'll probably be able to take care of down to the... Uh, the bottom of the pot. I don't know what I understand what I just said now. But um, I really, really appreciate and celebrate the great. He is well traveled. You see, he's very, don't be deceived by his uh, humble, uh, pious look. He's a great man. Amen, somebody. I mean, I mean, these are people. Before you, before you relocated to the United Kingdom, He's blazed the trail of the gospel in Nigeria. He served in many notable ministries. If I mention some of those ministries, you will know them. And it's still a huge blessing. It's a source of blessings to several people all across the globe. And we're so privileged, highly blessed of God to have him in our midst this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, men and brethren, I'd like us to rise up this morning as I bring up my time of ministry. Put your hands together for the Lord one more time. Amen. Kindly have your seat. God bless you. Amen to Jesus. Let me tell you something. I'm most excited to be here this morning because I'm on my friend's pulpit. Amen. Um, you go to so many places, you want to be a man of God. Uh, in his house, I can, yes, I'm a man of God, but in his house, I will be a brother of God. Amen. Because he knows me. And I want to celebrate God's goodness and God's grace upon your senior pastor and uh, senior pastores. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, Pastor Yemi is such an amiable servant of God anointed to the teeth. You know, uh, he's, 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 he's a very profound teacher. You know, he's a man of God that preaches the word of God with the authorized authoritative authority. <laughs> so, you know, when we met, you know, sometimes when you meet people, don't just look away from them because when we met, it was just quiet. It didn't look like it. You know, you need to discover some people before you discover them. You understand? So I met him, and when I began to look at him from afar, I saw grace. I saw integrity. I saw tenacity. I saw focus. You understand? <laughs> and I saw consistency. A man who is so consistent on what God has called him. 
Can you can somebody blame me witness here? If you try, move from Ibadan to Lagos. You find him what in what God has called him to do. He will not say because any other person is doing something, he will do it until he's so convinced. And that's the reason why he doesn't know. That's the reason why I, I just pinch my tail before beside him. Let it rub off for me. Amen to Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. And another thing I love about him is that he's one of my greatest cheerleaders. You know cheerleaders? People who encourage you to go further. He's never despised God's grace upon my life. He's ever respected God's grace upon my life. He's such a man of humility. You understand? Let me tell you something. Uh, he's a sheep and he's, he's a lion. Uh, the one you want is the one uh, you will get. You understand what I mean? Uh, he's a sheep, but if you press the button of a lion, he will roar at you. <laughs> so, man of God, I really celebrate you. Thank God for your life. Come and celebrate, Pastor Yemi. Hallelujah. Amen. What shall I say about Pastor Roke? Wow. You know, one thing, you know, I just love about this woman of God is that you see, there's some men of God that you are so close, you are so friendly with their husband, I mean with them, but not with their spouse. This woman is not just Pastor Yemi's wife to me. She's a friend. You understand? You will, you will discover that when we talk. Amen. Even when we don't see and we don't talk for a long time, by the time we pick it up like this, ah, a lot of you will have been looking at us because I, we don't do man of God and sister or woman of God to each other. It's Pastor Yemi, Pastor Dam. You understand what I mean? And I thank God for the grace God has given to her to stand by her husband through thick and thin. She's never despised the grace of God upon her. And also for her own consistency in what God is has called her to do. You know, so many times she doesn't know that I secretly watch her program, I follow her on social media, I see what she's doing. I can preach your message of yesterday. For <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come and celebrate, Pastor Roque. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So, I see, I see what she does and I want to thank God. And I want to thank God for all the men and, um, you know, uh, the women that are serving in the kingdom. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, I bring greeting to you from London where God lives. Amen. <laughs> are you sure God is here? Uh, okay. God, London is God's house. This is the harness. Is he? <laughs> Come and celebrate God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Um, I'm, I'm not going to take your time, but I want to please beg you, if you don't have any urgency to leave after the first service, please, that is a word God has given to me to give to you. And I believe that I will not be able to do justice to that word, the first service. I will start and I'm going to conclude the second service. And please, you need to listen. Amen. You might have heard it before. You might have maybe engaged with the word before, but it's, come, it's going to come in a very, very different form this time. And I believe God is going to bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Please, if you don't have to hurry out, I want you to stay for the second service. Even if you are going to stay in the overflow, it's going to worth it. And let me tell you something, it's no pride. By the grace of God, God has uh, he called me for dominion. And there's nowhere I preach that the people don't do enter into dominion. And I pray that you will enter into your dominion in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. My wife sent her greetings and my children they asked me to greet you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not going to waste the time this morning by the grace of God. We're going to go sweetly into the word of God. Um, I'm a fast preacher, but I will try my best to be calm. Amen. <laughs> because I really, really want to teach. I don't want to rush the word. I want you to hear what the Lord will have me say to you. And I pray that you will not miss it. In Jesus' mighty name. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for the opportunity that you have granted us this morning to enter into your word. And the scriptures say that the entrance of your word gives light. 
Father, we reach out to the light that the word is going to give to us this morning. And every darkness in that area of our life will be dispelled in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we are ready for you. Turn us on, both the speaker and the hearer, that at the end of the day, this word will profit us like never before. We give you praise because you are here in this service. It's an insult to bring you again because we know that before we go here, you're already waiting for us. So, Father, we receive the blessing of the service today. And everybody under the sound of my voice, Lord, will not miss what you are prepared for him or her in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the praise and glory. For in praise, pray in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Son of the living God. And let the church shout the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, the topic of my teaching this morning is what I titled the seed of honor. The seed of honor. A lot of us probably understanding what uh, of what a seed is. Praise the Lord. And you see, there's something that is very peculiar with God. God has never created anything without a seed. Because God is not a God that makes things to just disappear after their first use. He wants it to be reused again and again. And that's the reason why everything you do in life is a seed. If you, live, uh, if you laugh at me or, or smile with me, it's a seed. If you mock me, ridicule me, it's a seed. If you celebrate me, it's a seed. If you backbite against me, it's a seed. Praise the Lord. <laughs> because what you are telling that person, don't tell anybody you are the first person I'm telling. Rather, that is the tenth person you are telling. Because anybody that is backbiting, that is what they do. They say, oh, uh, you are the first person I'm telling. Don't tell anybody. While you are saying that, the angels from the North Pole, from the South Pole, from the West Pole, from the East Pole, they were there. Both the good, the bad, and the ugly. So everything you bring out is what they will collect from you and they will take and spread all over. So while you are backing against another person, another person is getting ready prepared. Anyone that has that same seed as you. You understand what I mean? So the same thing with success. When you like somebody to be successful, when you present yourself as an helper of destiny for someone, you want to be that person that will be the one that God will use as a good Samaritan for any other person. Believe me so sincerely. God is preparing your own. Anywhere in the nations of the world, they will look for you. You understand? You see, and you see, the maker of men is the opportunity that God presents to us. And our opportunity have in need the epas of destiny that will escalate what God designs to do in our lives to us. A lot of people, you will not live where you are until God pushes somebody to you to push you from the place of your rest to the place of your manifestation. A lot of people have been stranded in the affairs of life. Why? Because they have not found someone. There's someone you are looking for. There's a woman. There's a man. There's a place. There's a venue. There's a circumstance. There's an opportunity that is waiting for you. Until you find it, you cannot live a life of meaning. May God Almighty open your eyes to dictate and discern every opportunity that he has put before you in Jesus' mighty name. Show me a man that has given testimony of success, a testimony of breakthrough, testimony of lifting, elevation, and promotion. And I will present to you a person who has found opportunity in Christ. No man can be made without opportunity. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse number 11. No man, no woman, no child, no, no student, no, no director in the uh, place of uh, um, whatever secular place or anywhere can be made without any opportunity. Opportunities will be the presenter of every man. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. And believe me, such opportunity have been presented to you today. A circumstance, an event, a worship, opportunity to listen for the word. Not listen, the word. For the word that God is going to speak to you. 
Because when God is speaking, God is not speaking to a congregation. You say, oh my God, my my God, you are come to speak blasphemy. No, it's no. God does not speak to a congregation. God speaks to individual. Who speaks to a, a, a congregation? Pastor, I'm the one speaking to the congregation. You know what God does? The scripture says in the book of John, I've forgotten the particular verse now. You know, he said of the God said, Jesus Christ said of the Holy Spirit, he said he will take of mine and give to you. Praise the Lord. In every word that I'm speaking, I'm speaking Jesus, the logos of God. Jesus is the logos of God. Jesus is the scripture. But there's a word that the Holy Spirit will break from the logos, which is called Rima. Amen to Jesus. The inspiration. The, 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 the word that Holy Spirit has perspired on that will spell your divine emancipation. Why I'm speaking? I'm speaking to you, every one of you now, but I'm not speaking to, I mean, the Holy Spirit is not speaking to everyone. He's speaking to individual. So he's going to be taking the word that I'm going to be speaking, you understand, and dispersed it and break it into practicals according to the understanding of men. That's something I say you will not understand. That that's thing that I am going to say here, you are going to reproduce to me and I will tell you I didn't say that. Holy Spirit told you that. Several times Pastor Yemi has come in here, taught you very dynamic teacher of the world. Listen to him several times. He breaks the world. Quote, parrot, uh, quote scripture like parrots. Amen. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. You want to, <laughs> don't mind me, don't mind me. Just <laughs> you know, a, a, a man of death. But when he's speaking, he's speaking to a congregation. That is his work. But the Holy Spirit is speaking every word that he's saying and he's breaking it to everybody according to the level of understanding. You know what? Because the understanding that you don't have, God cannot instruct you through. The reason why people are devoid of direction is because they don't have the understanding that they need to have. Why you are asking God to bring you to the place of direction? God is asking you to prepare yourself to seek after knowledge and the word that will speak to you. And that's the reason why I've come today. All this thing I've said is just to introduce the message to you. Praise the Lord. Because when God created you, you know I've not read the scripture. When God created you, he created you to have relevance. Relevance, significance, he created you for purpose. But a lot of people are still bedridden in the spirit. Why? Because they have not discovered the key and the law. God, as much as the God of principle is the, I mean, sorry, God of power is also the God of principle. The problem I have in our days today is that people are forgotten processor. We are baking microwave Christians. You want to claim it and have it now. That's a process. Amen to Jesus. Amen. There is a process. And that's one of the processes that I've come to present to you today. Please wait for second service. I beg you to like for straight. Wait, because I'm just starting. You know, a car, before it gets. You know, I, I, I use a Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz, any one of you, you know, riding Mercedes Benz, you understand that before it gets to that balance, it will just be. But when it gets to that balance, let's not see the car that will overtake I mean, that, that, that will overtake it. So that is what I'm doing now. Praise God. So God called you to relevance. He called you to significance. He called you to be an amazement to your world. But the reason why you have not gotten in there, in fact, even gotten to the realms of dreams, as God has called this house, to clear the realms of manifestation of your dreams, is because you have not picked some of the principles and the processes that God wanted to go through. This morning you will pick it. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 20. Please, I want to beg of you, I watched the time before I started, but when the time is up, pastor, please just give me a sign. Amen. Amen. I will hang it wherever I get to, then second Sabi will continue. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 20. The scripture says, so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. Tekoa is just a short, 
a small city not too far from Jerusalem. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Here, O Judah, and you inhabitant of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, <laughs> and you shall be established. <laughs> believe in his prophets, <laughs> and you shall prosper. May that word come to full manifestation in the ears of everyone that is hearing today. In the name of Jesus. That is the first scripture. Don't be in a hurry. I will come back there to explain. Now, another scripture I'm going to be reading before I go ahead. First Samuel chapter 20, verse number, uh, chapter 2 rather, uh, verse number 30. All these scriptures, they have their historical background. There were things that happened in the Bible days that, that made these scriptures to be written. Amen to Jesus. No scripture is ever out of context and God can never, can never contradict himself. So this scripture says, therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father will walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. <laughs> May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. These are the two scriptures that I'm going to build my point on. I want to let you know that the Lord God that created us, created us for honor and for dignity. Because when he created us in Genesis chapter 1 verse number 26, the scripture says he created us in his likeness. After his image, praise the Lord. That is to say when God created us because before it was distorted. God created us for dignity. He created us for, for royalty. Now, God shared his divinity with humanity. So that wherever we need divinity, we don't need to even be calling on God. The only thing God wanted to do is to come down and have fellowship with man. Everything God, I mean, man needed, Babu Jakarta, was inside of man. And that's the reason why when God created everything, he did not finish creation. And he told Adam that, you see, these are the bills beast of the field of the field these are the no, i mean the, the the water i mean the the, the animal in the sea and uh, in the sea road sorry and everywhere he said whatever name you name them the same name they bear that's the reason why you have the power capacitor, the power to change situation the power to do anything god wants you to do because of your ignorance because of your lack of um uh, 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 attention to detail. Sorry, I'm not trying to insult you. You have uh, allowed yourself to be mesmerized, embarrassed by the devil. Why? Because the devil does not have the power to do anything against you. Oh my God, you only have power to do anything against yourself because the authority that you need to change your situation, God has put in your mouth. So what the devil does is that he will just change some circumstances. I will not you to begin to confess negative against yourself. And we have four winds from the corner of the world. The west, the south, the east, and the north. Whenever you blow into the air, they rattle together to make sure that thing come back to you. No wonder the scripture said that you not say before the angel, that is an error. So you have to be careful about what you say about yourself. About your wife, about your husband, about your children, about your circumstance, about that job, about that boss in your place of work. Because you say, ah, he, he said we'll never be correct to you. Yes. No matter how terrible. And that's the reason why God has brought me your way today. To show you. God created you in divinity. Amen to Jesus. He shared it with divinity with you. And that's the reason why the scripture says in the book of eight, uh, uh, Psalm 8 verse number 4 and 5. He said, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you remember. Him. Have you not made him a little lower than the angels? That is a mistranslation. You say, have you not made him a little lower than the Elohim? The word is Elohim bara, God in plural. The father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. Have you not made him just a little lower? That is the divinity of God. And you have crowned him with what? With glory and what? With honor. So what you need to do to bring about your royalty your dignity is honor. Praise the Lord. 
So that is the principle that God has created. A lot of people have failed. A lot of people have missed their mark. A lot of people have not done what they are supposed to do because they have forgotten that very little word, honor. That's the reason why I've come with this simple word, the seed of honor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to jump something now because I want you to hear some of the things. The second service, I'm going to actually expand on it, on, on, on it more. Honor is so good. Honor is so significant. It's one of those things that God has created. I told you that every time God creates something, he put a seed, he embeds a seed that will actually cause that thing to be reproductive again. You understand? So, everything that we have had in destiny, I'll give us what we need. Amen to Jesus. You know, the seed of learning give you, has, uh, give you understanding, isn't it? Praise the Lord. You know, the seed of joy gives you miracles. Because the scripture says, with joy, you will draw out waters from your well of salvation. Isaiah chapter 12, verse number 3. Amen. The word salvation is all encompassing. No salvation of giving your life to Christ. Amen. So everything embedded in it. Miracle signs, wonders. Hallelujah. So, and the seed of honor gives you what I call the miracle of access. The miracle of access. I told somebody somewhere, I said, look here. In those days when I was pastoring here, some men and women ganged up against me. And they said, oh, pastor, you always go to the houses of people. You know, you think they do this, they do that. I said, what? It's not that I, I serve you too. I serve everybody. I'm not a partial person. God is no respectful person. But let me tell you something. You see, so many times, Reverend Adjoti, some people don't have the understanding that whoever, you know, blesses you is who you naturally gravitate towards. Why are you going to that your uncle every day? Knocking on his door. It's because you know when he goes, he, where he will not only give you transport money to go back to your place, he will give you more. Isn't it? So where are you going? You say, oh, I'm tired of receiving this money. Let me not go anymore. No. And that's the reason I'm dropping a lot of things because of time. I will round up now because of time. That's the reason why I want to tell you. You understand? Uh, uh, we, we don't know that anything in God, this time that the Osapa spoke in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, you understand, he saw something about God, and he saw something about the prophet of God. And he said, look here, the only thing that you are permitted to do when you trust God is that you are going to be established. But there are some people that God has deposited your prosperity in their life. So that until you are connected to them, in one way or the other, you will not prosper. Oh, pastor, I've come again. Oh, they have come. Oh, I've come. Oh, I can hear some mind saying that. Amen. We are not charlatans in ministry. Ask your pastor. Ask your pastor, missus. The degree they had. The opportunity they had. I told somebody when it was time to make a mess of me in the United Kingdom. Look, he said, look at me. I said, look here. I'm not blowing my trumpet. I had a degree here before I left. When I get, got to the United Kingdom, I went for another degree. Another, not master. After a master, I began to write professional examinations in profit, project management. I didn't just study project management through, through YouTube. I wrote do Prince 2 methodology, methodology do. I wrote exam. I am certified. I belong to the Institute of IT, United Kingdom. But because of the gospel, I let all of this to follow after God. This is the reason why a lot of you need to come to time with this message of honor. Not only honoring God, but honoring men of God. That is where I'm going. Don't worry, I will say it well, second service. You have to honor men of God. The people that God has placed over you. A lot of you don't have the understanding. Yes, I know, Reverend Adioti, people have bastardized this. Men of God has made merchandise of God's people in church. They go on TV, on Facebook, on social media, they begin to ask for money up and down. You cannot even hear or see what they are doing. 
Some people will go on and say, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. He will say that before he finishes, he will say, okay, Matthew chapter 21, verse number 3. God said you should give to me $213. I know that some people like that. That is not enough for you to close your mind as against something that is going to bless your life. Amen to Jesus. And that's the reason why I come your way. Don't worry, I've not really done justice to this message. Just come second service. Amen to Jesus. Or if you cannot come, you can just listen again. But another reason why I want to let you know that you see, God has called us as people to make the people that God has put upon us happy so that they will have the audacity to dive into the realms of the spirit and bring more revelation that you need for your divine emancipation. I don't knock on members' door. I don't beg for money. Pastor Yemi knows me. I will not lose my integrity on the platform of finance or money or anything. I have made up my mind that I'd rather die than to deceive God's people. I may not have some things because of it. I'm satisfied. But I'd like to let you know that the only reason why some people are still at the back is because of the way they are perceiving pastors and pastor misses. See, pastor, I'm sorry, reverend, don't mind me, whatever I say. This man of God, this woman of God, they left her to serve him. Can all of you think uh, every pastor that is trying to make sure that they minister to people and they are trying to let the church expand, you know, is doing it in a professional way or because they want to build an empire. No! That's some sincere people among all of these people. That's some people who will serve you with dignity and integrity. Among short people are these two people. They are surprised what I'm saying. So they don't think they hire me to come and warn you. That is the truth of the matter. You know, I'm born and bred in Ibadan, so I know how Ibadan people think. I mean, I know the minds, mindset. Amen to Jesus. There are some of the messages you preach somewhere here that you will not, I mean, you will not think twice. But when you come to Ibadan, hmm, you have to be very careful. Hallelujah. Please don't mind me. I'm born here. I'm a native of Ibadan. Praise God. I grew up here. Sec primary school, secondary school, university. So I know what I'm talking about. So don't be deceived by my white clothes. Amen to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I want you to know that by the grace of God, God has sent me to you. To be able to be a blessing to your man of God. As God has been, as God has used them to be a blessing to you. You have to be a blessing to your man of God as God has helped them to be a blessing to you. What is it that God wants you to do with all these men in the school of honor? I will explain better later. Number one, you have to bring yourself to love them. Pastors are difficult to honor and love. Why? Because your cane, be permit me to say the word, your cane is in their hands. Because when they come to the pulpit sometimes and they begin to say something, you will think that somebody has reported you to them. You will not know that they are just speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Because God loves you. He's revealing the case that no other person knows to your man of God. And he's instructing you from that platform and you are getting annoyed. You have to love him. You have to honor him. That is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 12 and 13, you know, English Standard Version. He says, we ask you, brother, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. That is the Bible I'm preaching to you. You have to love your pastor, whether you like it or not. Because in loving you, God makes a way for you. I know people have gone ahead to, Pastor Yemi, please let me know. People have gone ahead to, to, 
to, to, to, to do a lot of things. But today, I've come to tell you something. Love your pastor. Number two, protect him from distraction. I will expand. I'll just release three, then I will do the rest later. Protect him from distraction. A lot of you, you, you just want pastor to come to your house. You just want pastor to call you for the things that you can do. You just want to hear pastor's voice. In fact, you even, you even judge how pastor serve you and love you by your phone call. If you call and pastor does not pick the call, then pastor is in trouble. You will threaten not to come to church anymore. Amen. You see that sometimes we come to church, it's take it, take it, miracle. And sometimes we are, I told you, the God of power is the same God of principle. It's process this morning. Now let me jump and share the last one. Then I will do the one, the other ones in the second service. Now, also, to honor God in the life of your pastor, you have to give to your pastor in cash and in kind. Amen. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 6 to 10. I'm not preaching outside of the scripture. I'm preaching what I saw in the scripture. He said, let the one who is taught in the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Let me stop there. Be not deceived. God is no more. Whatever you sow, you reap. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. It's a good, it's a good time to put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. If you are not hungry with me. <laughs> Come and lift up your hands to heaven. And begin to give God the praise for the opportunities given to you. As regards these words that are brought to you. Begin to thank him. Begin to exalt him. Don't forget the seed of honor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen to Jesus. Thank you Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Pastor Jeremy, please, can you give me just five minutes? Let me just quickly, please. I know your time is pressed. You know, amen to Jesus. There's something I want to do this morning, and I don't want to be stopped. It came to my spirit as God put this message in my heart. And I believe that God is going to bless you for it. If you believe I'm God's servant, and God has used me in the nations of the world, I don't need to propagate the gospel of myself. And God has blessed souls. Souls. I will give testimony later because of time. I just want you to do something. Hosha, can I have envelopes, please? Quickly. I just want you to sow a seed. Ah, some people have been okay, it's pandemic time. Blah, blah, blah. It's a seed that God will use to bring you out of the issues that you find yourself. A seed, this is not offering for the church. Okay, give me two. Give me. Amen. And I'm not going to call any amounts. I just feel that we should bless Pastor Yemi and his wife this morning. Amen. Pastor Yemi, don't, please don't mind me. Amen. I just feel that we should, this is not offering, church offering, this is not your tithe. I just feel, and don't, don't do something that you cannot spend in tantalizer. Don't do something that, you see, you will take to, you know, um, Sky Bank, um, what is the place? Sky Bank. You understand? Do something tangible because God sees your heart. Please, beloved, it's not by force. You don't believe in what I said, I excuse you by all means. It's no pride. But if you do it, you will partake of the grace and the anointing of God upon my life and upon your pastor's life. Because I'm going to give him a microphone to pray for you at the end of it. Are we ready to do that? Please. Pastor, can they put your account on the... the <laughs> pastor is looking at me like, what is this one that pastor is doing? This is what God put in my heart, sincerely. This is what God put in my heart. I want us to bless this man of God. Please, please don't hesitate, Pastor. Give us your account detail. Let them put it there. Can they? Okay, please. Media, help me quickly, quickly, quickly. Pastor will not give me. Thank God you have it. Praise the Lord. Quickly, quickly, my time is going. Amen. I wanted to come and pray for you. Like I told you, it's not by force. It's not, I'm not coercing anybody to do it. But I believe God. That the God that I serve, that I preach in the nation of the world, if you do this because you put it in my spirit, 
If you do this, you will see the hand of God in your life. In the name of Jesus. Are we ready? Is it there? Hallelujah. Quickly, media. I have for five minutes. Three minutes is gone now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's do it quickly. Let's do it quickly. Yeah. I'm going to do mine. Praise the Lord. Amen to Jesus. Please let us quickly copy. If you're going to uh, screenshot the account detail, please. Let's up quickly do it. Amen. Are we ready now? Please, we are giving by cash. Please just put it in the envelope. Please give something tangible. You understand? Don't give 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. Give money that is, that you know, Lord, this is a sacrifice of praise. This is a sacrifice of honor. I want to bless you, O oh Lord through your servant. You know he's blessed you. The scripture says, he that water shall be watered. Amen to you. Are we ready? Can we lift up our hands up? Amen. If you are giving, let me see your hands raised. Whether by, whether electronically or, you know, by cash. Please, something tangible, something tangible, something tangible. God is going to do a work. In fact, something that is on my mind is, is not is just that, that one I need to take permission before I do. Amen to Jesus. Some of us should be tired about the car that our pastor is riding up and down all these years. He's a man that wants to make merchandise of God's people. He will change that car and do official car. But he's worthy of an official car from the church. Amen to Jesus. Are we ready? The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. If we pray for you, then you will see me again the second service. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together as we welcome Pastor Yemi.